The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Full Melt, Full Melt. where a ruling this morning removed a major restriction on Montana's medical marijuana program and the industry. A state judge said a key provision of voter passed initiative 182 will take effect immediately, making the drug available to potentially thousands of patients. I-182 reverses a state law that limits medical marijuana providers in Montana to only three patients, a limit that the industry said essentially put it out of business. But a drafting error in the initiative meant the reversal won't take effect until next July. I-182 supporters had intended to remove the three patient limit immediately when voters passed the measure last month. And they asked District Judge James Reynolds of Helena to overrule the area, the error rather, and dissolve the three patient limit immediately. State officials did not oppose the request, and after a brief hearing today, Reynolds agreed that an error had occurred and should be fixed immediately. A spokeswoman for the medical marijuana industry told MTN News the ruling clears the way for medical marijuana patients to sign up with new suppliers. Physicians who do provide medical marijuana referrals will be get their phones will be ringing off the hook as people try to get back into the program. Um, and I think that providers will be busy helping uh, patients with that paperwork and helping them process it and getting this moving. I think the department's going to be very, very busy. The three patient limit, which took effect in August, has denied providers for about 10,000 medical marijuana. It's the full show. Are you Get ready for the 22nd annual Chase Hawks Rustock Rodeo. Your rodeo culture and entertainment. TheFullMelt.com. It's your backyard. It's celebrity interviews, talks with politicos. Plus, your calls are on the air. Download the Full Melt app free at the Apple and Android app stores with your host, Steve Green. The Full Melt Show. <laughs> Funny, funny in the lab, it can do with a dab. You wanna take a stab at it, bring what you have. You think it's alright till you tune in tonight. I'll leave you on the floor with a full melt show, full melt show, full melt show, full melt show, you funny, funny in the lab, it can do with a dab. You wanna take a stab at it, bring hey, what you uh, have. Happy you holidays to you. Right you Merry tonight. Christmas. I hope uh, your mistletoe is 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 leading you in good condition. Welcome to the full melt show. I don't know if should I I, I think I gotta get I gotta get rid of that intro. At least for now. Played it a couple of times. Uh, sometimes you got too much time on your hands. Uh, now I don't have too much time on my hands. <laughs> I did at the time that I made that, though. <laughs> I, I found an app where you can, uh, you know, the app's supposed to make you uh, rap, to, uh, rap to some popular music. And it did not do that, by the way. It's, uh, it's actually a terrible app. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you, if you're familiar with uh, with the music that that's uh, playing to, you, you'll know that that's nothing like the original song, even though we gave it our best attempt. You know, I got a bit of a cold. It's cold and flu season. I think I've succumbed to the first. Uh, today on the program, I wanted to. Uh, kind of go over some of the stuff that's happening right now with regards to uh, uh, employment. You know, the prohibitionist mentality has had its grip on this nation, and the world for that matter, due to its grip on this nation. For decades. And as is the case, of history, and I guess now also looking at the future, um, it has an effect on industry. It has an effect on, I think, uh, employment. I think that it would be in the position of, and I don't want to speak for anybody, but if I think if you asked any of the people that are a part of the organization known as the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. <clears throat> um, they would tell you that cannabis and hemp as a whole are 
so various in the numbers of products that can be obtained from them that have so many broad purposes and uses that nearly 0% of the cannabis plant would go to waste in commercial application. So we're not just talking about the one little tiny thing that everybody wants to make a big deal about, which is the THC. Not even talking about that. Just throw that one in the trash for now. Pretend it doesn't even exist. The, the number of things that you can get from a cannabis plant or a hemp plant, both of them, are so various and sundry as to be nearly endless. And, and let's face it, folks. Uh, if, you're, if you're going to be a company that is, say, a chemical company or, say, a, a petrochemical company, and you're in the business of trying to figure out what the hell you can make out of light, sweet, crude. Uh, that's what you get. Some goop out of the ground. What can we do with this? We know that um, it's nasty. It stinks. It's sticky. It's volatile. It catches fire. And, and so far, it sounds like my aunt at Christmas time. Um. I'm just kidding. Not that ant. Uh, the other ant. Never mind. So the 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 problem with uh something like cannabis being open on the free market, right? Just available uh, just like light sweet crude would be. If you imagine you had to to put a drill into the ground to pump up some cannabis flowers. Or just, you know, the cannabis plant was being pumped out of the ground like the oil. It's the same thing. It's a commodity. What can you do with the cannabis plant? Just like what can you do with the oil plant? Now, those guys making stuff out of the goop out of the ground are pretty limited. It's an oil-based product only. There's no other substance in there but petrochemical. That's it. It's just big, raw petrochemical. That's all that it is. You can make tar out of it. You can make plastic out of it. Well, gosh, if you get it into a lab, you can figure out all kinds of ways to make various forms of all of those things. And then products that you can support with them. You know, uh, plastics, just look at the, you know, how many things can you do with plastic? Right now, there's so much plastic. There's actually a garbage island right now. The island out in the, in the Pacific Ocean... It's, it's Fiji Island. Is it not Fiji Island? That's not, I take that back. It's not Fiji Island. Um, oh, what is the, I got to look it up now. There's an island in the Pacific known as Garbage Island. And Garbage Island, I'm just going to look it up now. It's the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, also described as the Pacific Trash Vortex. It's a gyre of, of marine debris particles uh, central north in the Pacific. It is so big, it's down at the, it's, it's at the Midway Atoll. That's what it is. This is the, you remember the Battle of Midway? The Battle of Midway. You know, it's in the Pacific Ocean. Where the Battle of Midway took place, the Midway Island, the uh, Midway Atoll. 2,000 miles from, the main, from any mainland is so full of plastic and garbage. Um, I mean, it's, it's all plastic. It's all of it. This was published. I'm just looking at a story published. Uh, this is the Office of Response. And, uh, this is NOAA. The National, uh, it's, and NOAA is you know, like NOAA, NOAA, NOAA Weather Radio. It's the, it's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. NOAA. This uh, article is published. Um, does it have a published date? I'm not seeing any published date. Oh, here it is. This is back in February of 2013. While everything may be bigger in Texas, some reports about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch would lead you to believe that this marine mass of plastic is bigger than Texas. 
maybe twice as big as the Lone Star State, or even twice as big as the continental U.S. For NOAA, a national science agency separating science from science fiction about the Pacific Garbage Patch and other garbage patches, is important when answering people's questions about what is and how should we deal with the problem. I mean, we have an island patch. Well, let's just figure it out. <laughs> here, it, here it says, the NOAA Marine Debris Program's uh, Kerry Morrisage takes down two, m- two myths floating around within the, with the rest of the debris about the garbage patches in a recent uh, a post on the Marine Debris blog. Number one, there is no garbage patch, a name which conjures images of floating landfill in the middle of the ocean with miles of bobbing plastic bottles and rogue yogurt cups. She explains this misnomer. While it's true that these areas have a higher concentration of plastic than other parts of the ocean, much of the debris found in these areas are small bits of plastic, microplastics. They're suspended throughout the water column. A comparison I like to use is the debris is more like flecks of pepper floating throughout a bowl of soup rather than a skim of fat that accumulates or sits on the surface. She's not downplaying the significance of the microplastics. They're nearly ubiquitous today, degrading into tiny bits from a range of larger plastic items. And now turning up in everything from face scrubs to fleece jackets and their impacts on marine life mostly remain a big unknown. Uh, number two, there are many garbage patches, and by that we mean that the trash congregates to various degrees in numerous patches and parts of the Pacific and the rest of the ocean. Uh, these natural gathering points appear uh, where rotating currents, winds, and other ocean features converge to accumulate marine debris, as well as uh, plankton, seaweed, and other sea life. A convergence zones in the ocean and NOAA study, a NOAA study of the nor, uh, Pacific North uh, subtropical convergence zone. Anyway, you look at these peppery soups of plastic in the Pacific. None of the debris should be there. The NOAA Marine Debris website and blog have lots of great information and references, blah, blah, blah. Um, the thing is freaking huge. I mean, it's at least the size of Texas. A patch of garbage plastic soup existing not just floating on on the surface, but in a column feet deep into the ocean. The only way that this plastic can exist is if you suck the juices out of the earth, known as light, sweet, crude, and other forms of crude oil. And, and you distill them into all the distillates that you get from said material, which includes gasoline, jet fuel, diesel fuel, and all that crap. And then uh, you take the solid mass left over afterwards and extract from it the plastic components that you need to create these various and sundry bits that are floating in that soup. That's how big the petrochemical industry is. And I'll tell you, nobody's making, inventing rayon and nylon. If you've got hemp or cannabis as a natural substitute, you don't need to invent that crap. You're getting the full melt. Your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. That's why we are excitedly wagging our tail about our hemp-based product that caters specifically to your best friend. Hemp oil drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. And really, all kinds of pets. Hempwell drops are made from virgin, cold-pressed, organic hemp oil. Our extraction process ensures the highest quality oil for your pet. With superior taste, smell, and nutrition, we hold ourselves to the highest standards, never using heat, chemicals, or preservatives in making our hemp oil products for pets. Pick up a bottle of Hempwell drops today at select retailers or online at hempwell.com. Hempwell, hemp health for pets. If you missed the last Full Melt show... You missed a lot. Yes, sir. We are just here to get you qualified, okay, for the lower interest rates. This is a Visa card. Okay. It's a Visa card charge with pull, right? So you need. why do you need the numbers off the card? Yeah, I was going to let you know, like, what is your new interest rate going to be and what you qualified for, okay? Well, wouldn't, wouldn't it be a security risk if I was to give my card number over the phone? 
like sure you know you're the one who said did the billing statement every month aren't you, know, you, you really just a, aren't you really services. aren't you really just a liar aren't you just lying about this aren't you just trying to steal my credit card number <laughs> oh you are you no. little piece of shit you're a little fucking liar aren't you you're a little that's foreign piece of are, shit, man. aren't you? You're a little foreign fucking puke, aren't you? That's what you are. You you're... fucking piece of shit. Oh you're no, fine. oh no! You get to suck you my fucking. Gun. You get to suck my fucking American dick, you foreign piece of fucking shit. There you go. That's how you do that. Imagine a world where patients can use marijuana like any other medicine. The Marijuana Patients Organization challenges the status quo by helping our neighbors to enjoy a better quality of life. Visit the MPO at marijuanapatients.org and enjoy informative articles, engaging debates, and information about treatments, doctors, and dispensaries in your area. Over 50,000 people have registered at MarijuanaPatients.org since 2010. Join us at the Marijuana Patients Organization today, MarijuanaPatients.org. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, it's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rudoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rudoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. We stand up with you. Wish your skin could bounce back like it used to? Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel instantly quenches skin to keep it supple and hydrated day after day. With hydrating hyaluronic acid, which retains up to a thousand times its weight in water, this refreshing water gel plumps skin cells with intense hydration and locks it in for supple, hydrated skin that bounces back. Hydro Boost from Neutrogena. See what's possible. And now, a Planet Green Trees flashback. Th- that is the paradox. You know, like you can't make this the civil employees rebut the presumption, right? The state just gave $8.5 million to this administrative agency to implement. I mean, the, the concept there is a little offset. The police are still seem to be involved in it. Nothing, oh, yeah. nothing takes incentives away from police. In fact, it gives them more fish to shoot in the barrel. Right. The police are literally the regulatory agency for the yeah. entire program. And, and why is that? You know, they needed their, their cut. They're the only ones knowledgeable and responsible enough to yeah. handle it. Yeah. This major public health and safety issue. Don't miss the Planet Green Trees show. Thursdays at 8 Eastern on Spreaker. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. Before we went off the break, uh, I was talking about the garbage patch and, and how you're not going to have a garbage patch unless you're throwing away crap that was made from oil. Now, if you got something like oil, now remind you, I'll remind you that, you know, as, 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 as little as, you know, before the turn of the century, we're talking a little over 100 years ago that people really just didn't know what to do with all that gunk that's squirting out of the ground in the Arab sands. I mean, it was just it was just a nuisance. It was a mess. It was yucky. It was something you wanted to avoid. It was a hazard. It stunk terribly. If you got into it, you couldn't get it off you. Nobody knew what to do with this stuff. And, and here you got the poor people in all the Arab states, all of them, uh, going around trying to avoid this sand trap, this awful hazard. And at some point, the people from the United States came through with their technology and science and said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys don't know what you're sitting on, do you? You just don't know. Well, we got Henry Ford over there cranking out automobiles, and there's a bunch of corporations following suit. And there's about to be a huge influx of people wanting lots of fuel. Lots and lots of fuel where they just didn't know it. They just didn't need it before. And we know what happened after that. Now, it's not, no, you got music, the music industry. 
stacks of wax. Do those words mean anything to, is it just the DJs of the world that would understand what that is? Stacks of wax indicates a giant music collection. Uh, the wax being the vinyl. The vinyl coming from petrochemical. That's where it came from. It's where you get vinyl. It comes from oil. Wouldn't have existed, at least as we know it, without acetate, again coming from oil, which they make the master records with. It's soft enough to carve the groove in there to, to make the stereo recording. And then they take the acetate and they make a metal plate from it, and then they uh, stamp out records in you know, hot, goopy vinyl that hardens into a record. And that's old school music for you. Boy, back in the uh, late 1800s, turn of the century, uh, your RCA Victrola was all the rage. It was the technology of the day. It was the iPad of its day. If you had an old RCA Victrola, you could crank that bitch up with your hand. It wouldn't need to plug into nothing. Just crank it, crank it, crank it, crank it. Get a little wind on it there. The little turntable starts to spin it away. You drop it down on there, and you, you got the needle with the cone attached. Again, it doesn't need any electricity. It's just amplifying it like a megaphone. You put it in the groove and away. Look at that. Music. The people behind the petrochemical industry had dollar signs in their eyes, and they weren't going to let anyone... Get in the way of realizing that cash cow. And during the same period, the exact same period, you've got cannabis and hemp out there providing the same natural resource, yet they don't have to dig it out of the ground. They don't need to get it from a foreign country. They don't need to process it hardly at all. You get the same waxy, oily substances right there a couple of three times a year out of a hemp field. Out of a cannabis field. Does this give you any idea where the business purveyors, the guys who move capital around the earth, the guys behind free market enterprise and trade, there's no way in hell they wanted you to take their golden suction cup out of the ground uh, take that proboscis that's sticking into the earth and sucking that garbage. It's old crap that's just rotted in there from centuries ago. And just suck it out and find a way to do something with it. Because it's a hazard now. Look, we can make so many things with it. You got your Tupperware. You got your stacks of wax. You got fuel everywhere. You, got, you can make jet planes now. You can fuel race cars. You can even uh, find a way to use these products to send people to the moon. And we did. Yet the, the industry in the way there to move that. Look, this is about the free flow of capital. They had to find a way to arrest cannabis and marijuana. Because it was a, a natural, renewable resource that didn't contribute in a negative way to the environment. There's no way you can get that from oil. Zero. There's no pathway there. And, and again, the thing that I said before I went to break is that you don't have, you know, DuPont as a corporation... With scientists in there trying to manipulate these molecules into things that they can turn into things like rayon and nylon and all kinds of other tough coat fabrics, including, uh, but not limited to, uh, things like neoprene. You get bowling balls from that. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Bulletproof vests. All products of the oil industry. <clears throat> This is commerce that couldn't take place, at least in this form. These inventions couldn't be made. Uh, these discoveries couldn't be sought if you had cannabis and hemp in the way. Because nobody needs a tough fabric that's strong and durable and lightweight. If indeed you can make the same thing from hemp, and they were. Hemp for Victory was all about 
creating the things necessary to wage war in both world wars, both of them. It was all about creating the naturally available resources right here in our own states where you didn't have to depend on some foreign oil source to create the things necessary to wage war. They were making sails and ropes and fasteners and, and glues and indeed oils from hemp and cannabis. Um, they went so far as to create great black and white film reels, wartime film reels, encouraging Americans to not only buy war bonds to fuel the war, but to make sure you, you grow hemp for our victory. See, if you're in a foreign land waging war, it's a foreign war. It wasn't being waged here in the U.S. except for the, you know, the part where Japan attacks Hawaii. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. So you've got the purveyors of industry and capital in the way. And I'm just po- I'm leading all this historical data forward to point you to where we're at now. Where, where all of industry has latched on to the methods of prohibition. Because, again, they needed prohibition as a policy and needed to stamp out the planting of cannabis and hemp, not only in this country, but in every country they could manage to squeeze it out of. Because if they didn't, the purveyance of cannabis and hemp products, aside from the drug you could have derived from it, would be so available and influenced in in world markets that the things that you could make from the garbage in the earth uh, couldn't, couldn't be manufactured. There would be no need for them. They already have a product that, that, that solves the problem inexpensively, naturally, and, and locally. You'd have to import nothing. You'd have to drill nothing. You'd have to pump nothing. You'd have to s- destroy any environment. You'd have to burn anything. You'd have to distill anything. No energy is wasted. You plant a seed. You harvest. You process. Now, I don't even know if I want to get into agricultural workers or not, because this is all part of pl- what's playing into our current affairs, right? Uh, immigration. I don't know how many guys, if you go into an inner city area or any suburban area where people are unemployed and you ask them, look, I've got, I've got 10 jobs on the farm at a very low wage, I don't even know if it's minimum wage because many farms are not required to pay minimum wage. It's part of our agriculture policy. It's part of our minimum wage laws. Farms are exempt. If you go out on the farm, you might make, we'll give you, we'll give you four fifty an hour. We'll give you, I'll tell you what, for everybody that's really, really good, we'll give you five bucks an hour. I'll tell you every single person that's of normal stature in this country would walk away from that guy with those uh, 10 flags in the air. Nobody in the unemployment line is grabbing one of those 10 flags because what they could get from the unemployment office probably equals more than they'd bust their ass for out in the fields. So it was important from a food cost standpoint from an agriculture and commerce standpoint, from those commodities pricing standpoint, to keep agricultural labor costs at a minimum. And really the only way you could do that is to get lots of foreign people at an even lower socioeconomic status to come in because that's the only way that that $5 an hour or less money is attractive enough to somebody willing to put in that much work. So when when you say you got jobs that American citizens aren't willing or able to do, that's what they're talking about. Um, So now, 
Let's fast forward. Let's fast forward into current modern times. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little bit of a cold. <clears throat> if you've got an economy that's tanking because all the manufacturing jobs from the Industrial Revolution that we've been depending on for some decades have found corporate ownership that has found ways to work the legislature and export law and import law and trade agreements. They found ways to make it attractive enough to start moving expensive American manufacturing jobs overseas and start offshoring some of that labor cost, making their products lower priced, more competitive. They can sell more products overseas now because they're made at a low enough cost that the people overseas can afford them. Hey, we killed two birds with one stone. We increased revenue. We lowered costs. We made more products. We sold more things. The free market dollar moved around. Because if it doesn't move around, you've got a static economy. And nothing's getting spent. Nobody's doing anything. You've got massive problems. And, and, and I'm not speaking from an economist's standpoint. I'm just speaking from a realist standpoint. Speaking from a historical standpoint. Now you've got a situation where all the people, like I said, in, in industry, in, co in, in commerce, have wrapped their arms around, embraced, and milked the prohibitionist system. Now you've got your rayon, your nylon, your plastic. Some of it has even been abandoned. Some plastics we don't even make anymore because they're old school. Seriously, they're so old school that if you can find them today, they're worth money. What's that stuff called? Um, I'm just going to put in the Google machine. <laughs> the words, wait a minute. Did I want to do that? No, hang on. We'll do it this way. I'm going to put in here the words um, plastic worth money. You know, nowadays they even got plastic that's, um, you know, that's, uh, they, they found ways to manipulate plastic into conductive material. So you can actually use it like wires. Um, do, 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 do. I'm trying to, th I'm trying to find the name of this, um, I'm going to put the word, modify it with old plastic worth money. I'm trying to look, for, try and find the name of this stuff. It's, it's something, it's IT, it ends in I-T-E. Uh, this is all talking about recycling crap. Um, I'm going to, now I'm going to modify it instead of say old, I'm going to say antique. Antique plastic worth money. That's what I'm Googling now. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Hold on. We're going to break, but I'm going to still tell you before we go to break what it is. Do, 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 do. This is from eBay. Da, 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 um. Little differences. Da, 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 da. Vintage buttons. Damn it, I can't find the name of it. Oh, I guess I'll find it during the break. Wood buttons. Oh, God. All right. I'll tell you after the break what the crazy plastic is that's worth a lot of money if you can find it. Stand by. You're getting the bull melt. Your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. That's why we are excitedly wagging our tail about our hemp-based product that caters specifically to your best friend. Hemp oil drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. And really, all kinds of pets. Hemp oil drops are made from virgin, cold-pressed, organic hemp oil. Our extraction process ensures the highest quality oil for your pet. With superior taste, smell, and nutrition, we hold ourselves to the highest standards, never using heat, chemicals, or preservatives in making our hemp oil products for pets. Pick up a bottle of hemp oil drops today at select retailers or online at hempwell.com. Hempwell, hemp health for pets. Attention. Get ready to write down a very important number. Michael does not know how to fail. Second place is loser. If you have a medical marijuana case and need legal representation, call the best attorney, Michael Camorn. He's very passionate in the courtroom. Getting the best outcome requires quick legal action, and it needs to start with one call. 
toll-free to attorney Michael Camorn. 800-656-3557. Write it down. 800-656-3557. Michael Camorn gave us our life back. Attorney Michael Camorn. Vigorous criminal defense. Plato Compound can help kids practice communication skills. Start by presenting the visual of the letter or word. Then ask them to mold the Play-Doh compound into the shape of the letters. It's an effective way to foster speech and even writing. Ram trucks are reaching new heights when it comes to capability and efficiency. The Ram Heavy Duty is the most capable full-size pickup on the road today. And the Ram 1500 is the most fuel-efficient full-size pickup ever. So what does that mean? It means Ram trucks are built for the long haul. Ram, America's longest lasting pickups. Root Metrics, in the nation's largest independent study, tested wireless performance across the country. Verizon won big with 153 state wins. AT&T got 38, Sprint got two, and T-Mobile got zero. Verizon also won first in the U.S. for data, call, speed, and reliability. AT&T got text. Stuck on an average network? Join Verizon, and we'll cover your cost to switch. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. All right, so I found out what the name of that stuff is. It's Bakelite. I found it right after we went to break. Like, immediately after we went to break, uh, I found the term Bakelite. The boy I love's got another girl. So a Bakelite is, is one of these things that uh, it's like an old form of plastic. It's actually worth money nowadays. Uh, collectors like to collect it because it's brittle. It's hard. They used to make phone casings out of it, like the old dial phones. Used to make out of Bakelite. Uh, clock faces, you know, the, the stuff you'd hang on the wall. A lot of times were made of Bakelite. They made bangles in, in, in women's, you know, plastic jewelry out of Bakelite. Uh, there are some watches, uh, watch faces encasing some old jewelry uh, that was costume in nature. A lot of times used Bakelite. It was a cheap old plastic. Um, so if, if, you, uh, if you find some Bakelite, by the way, if, you, if you're wondering if something's plastic or Bakelite, you can just do a Q-tip test on it. Take a little bit of, uh, like, Formula 409 and put it on a Q-tip. And if you rub the surface with it, right on the front, um, and then look at the surface of the Q-tip. If the Q-tip is yellow, like a nicotine yellow, then you probably got Bakelite. Usually, if it's white Bakelite, it has an antique yellow cast to it. Like old dirty dentures or something. Um, anyway, these are the kinds of things uh, that people made with plastic. And, and again, I think it was one of the big... Now, pharmaceuticals are this, you know, got the same problem with pharmaceuticals. This is what I'm saying. Industry grasped onto prohibition. Industry found ways of, of making hay out of prohibition. Alcohol didn't at first. It was part of the same dirty category. And then you had, you know, the repeal of the, what is it, the 28th Amendment? What was it? I think it was the 28th Amendment. The Alcohol Prohibition Amendment. The federal government got out of the business of prohibiting the sale, use, transport, or otherwise consumption of alcohol. But it took a big, bloody, almost civil war to make that happen. It took the Purple Gang, it took the Al Capones of the world, it took the Rum Runners and all that crazy business. The federal alcohol enforcement teams now transported into the modern DEA that teamed up with the FDA to reinforce prohibition so that people weren't selling snake oil. Because cannabis must be some snake oil. It's in every doctor's bag, and, and they use it for everything from you know diarrhea to you know kleptomania. It's, it's got to be snake oil. We want proof. We want scientific evidence that cannabis, you know, oils and tinctures and remedies in a doctor's bag. Do what they say they do. And you know what? Cannabis doesn't fit the FDA model. You can't isolate it into a single molecule and test for its efficacy. And when you do, you find bad results. So they just didn't figure out that. Hadn't figured out at all. The cannabis doesn't fit that profile. It's one of the few 
natural sources for medicine that doesn't fit the isolate and test profile. You know why? Because all of the cannabinoids present in the plant act as a single force. It's encapsulated into one development, one delivery. Yes, you can break it apart and make all kinds of other stuff with it, including the things like you'd see the neon, rayon and nylon and, you know, lubrication and, uh, gosh, anything you can make with vegetable oil you can get from hemp seed oil. It goes on and on and on. It's an abundant source of a superfood. I mean, I could just stay here all day and tell you what normal knows. Now it's a different day. Now it's a different age. Now the worm turns, right? Because prohibition is no longer the order of the day. Prohibition is no longer all the rage. In fact, it's becoming quite opposite and quickly. And as it does, and you see manufacturing jobs that have left this country be replaced with new cannabis-related jobs, it is going to be awfully hard and an untenable position for our president-elect Donald Trump. Oh, I can't believe I still have to say that. To put in force a policy that would not only be untenable, but it would be unenforceable and unaffordable. And at the same time, you would be crippling the federal government from all the taxation resources they've decided to put in place in all these states that have medicalized cannabis for medical purposes or retailized cannabis for consumers in general. They've decided that the tax that they can generate off of this, the commerce that can be produced from this formerly forbidden plant is so ripe for, for mainstream production and accepted use that they're going to create a new industry. And as they've done it, many people have been employed, employment taxes have been generated. <coughs> Excuse me. Local cities and entities of government, townships, municipalities, counties, states, and indeed the federal government itself is a recipient of these taxation benefits. If you tell people they can't have their cannabis, the industry goes away, all the taxes go away, all the employment goes away, all the commerce created by that employment goes away. Indeed, you'd be sending this country back into a state of recession. There are that many jobs currently being held by the cannabis industry as regular employment vehicles that that would be the repercussions of sending forth such a policy. It would be expensive and there'd be nobody to pay for it because all the guys that are making money to send to the federal government are now unemployed again. To the tune of hundreds of thousands of people. And we're not even talking about just regular people looking for employment anymore in, in the private sector. We're talking about government workers. These jobs are, have been created by you know new cannabis laws themselves. We're going to appoint positions. The positions have payment attached. They, they, they've created jobs with salaries. There are inspectors. There are new police. There are rule makers. There are rule enforcers. Checks and balances. And industry thrives. And it's, it's, it's a gaining traction. It's, it's a waxing phase. It's not waning, it's waxing. It's getting bigger. The segment that's being created in employment through cannabis alone in this country is widening by the day. Uh, if you look into it, I did toggle back a couple pages here now looking for what Bakelite is. You got people like this doing this. Check this out. So, you know, maybe, please don't make me hear a commercial first. Is it going to do it? 
All right, I'll just do this. Hang on. Got to recycle the page. See, it'll play now. People often ask the BYOT. Now it's gonna just gonna play the stupid commercial. <laughs> I saw the cowboy commercial before. It's a. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna let it play because it's funny. Buy it, and it'll make it disappear for free. No, oh, it's terrible. Come on. All right, enough of that. Here we go. New on the night beat, a Texas senator wants to get a law passed to expand the use of medical marijuana in the Lone Star State. He filed his bill just today, which looks to increase the number of conditions that would qualify you for medical marijuana use. It's a move one Central Texan says could help save lives. News Channel 25's Ann Harder reports with the help of photojournalist Jordan Hicks. They always say if you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life, but... <laughs> To Cliff Duvall, marijuana advocacy is more than just a job. I'm a former educator. I believe that that's one of the keys to uh, gaining an understanding to the topic and the issue is being able to educate people about it. It's an opportunity to spread a message. Duvall does it by teaching, sometimes by using the facts. Over 81% of the population polled said that we needed to allow legal use of medical. Or the power of his own story. Problems. They found out I had vascular brain lesions on the right hemisphere of my brain. And I was on methadone from 2005 until 2009 for four years, three times a day. The side effects from the prescribed drugs turned Duval into a different person. So from an educator of the year, that communicated with hundreds of kids a day to not being able to even get outside or get up or even dress myself. Doval says turning to cannabis saved his life. Now, as president of Normal of Waco, he does everything he can to help others do the same. His main mission is to get that information into the hands of the people who could really benefit from it. His work earned him a spot next to Senator Jose Menendez as he filed a bill that could legalize medical marijuana for patients like Doval. I don't understand why this particular set of molecules that are made up, that make up cannabis, are any different than an aspirin or than hydromorphone or than anything else that's required. But until the bill passes, Duval will do his part by teaching everyone he can. The more they know, the less they'll fear it. The less they fear it, you know, the better it's going to be for a lot of people. In Waco, Ann Harder, News Channel 25. I mean, that's what's going on. You got people often ask the oh, BYU. I got to take that off again. <laughs> There's always a surprise commercial at the end. Jeez. There you go. There you have it right there. Don't you be confused about the idea that these guys in Texas just didn't turn their heads all of a sudden because I don't know. I don't know what the difference between this molecule and some other molecules for pain management are. Of course you don't because you never looked into it because you got busy suckling on the teat of the prohibitionist mentality, didn't you? You're getting the full melt. And now a Planet Green Trees flashback. When do medibles have to be have to be tested too? Is that also part of the caregiver? No, nope, that's only for the. Will they have to be that, tested? It's only for the dispensaries. But um, there is a new restriction with respect to medibles in that patients can only make them for themselves. Right. And they've created new crimes for transfers outside of the caregiver. They're, they're very specific. I, but, I mean, it's it's not. I, we just talk about it's 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 no more harsh than the manufacturer. Uh, no, no, no. I, 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 they can be so. transferred. The, the medibles can be transferred from the registered caregiver to the registered patient, but right. not beyond. And that's how that's right. they would expect you to interpret the law. Don't miss the Planet Green Tree Show Thursdays at eight Eastern on Spreaker. Promotional consideration provided by. NoSmell.com, pioneering the storage market for cannabis users. The NoSmell patented bag technology offers users 100% smell-proof detection from even the most sophisticated of noses. NoSmell.com, so nobody knows. When placing your order for a NoSmell bag, make sure to use discount code FULLMELT and take 10% off the entire order. Learn more about NoSmell technology at NoSmell.com. Stop chasing wonder while the day brings up It comes a sunrise and we'll see the sunset Coasting by the ocean with some music Turn it up, we got the whole night 360 days of this ooh, ooh.
voice. Happiness is calling at San Diego.org. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, it's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rudoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rudoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you, we stand up with you. My moderate to severe chronic plaque psoriasis made a simple trip to the grocery store anything but simple. So I had an important conversation with my dermatologist about Humira. He explained that Humira works inside my body to target and help block a specific source of inflammation that contributes to my symptoms. In clinical trials, most adults taking Humira were clear or almost clear, and many saw 75% and even 90% clearance in just four months. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Ask about Humira, the number one prescribed biologic by dermatologists. Clear skin is possible. Oh, Father, tell me, do we get what we deserve? Oh, we get what we deserve. It's the full melt. Radio show. Radio show. And where down we go. So I'm watching here on uh, KATV Channel 7. Uh, Governor Hutchinson uh, there in Arkansas announcing the appointments of the Arkansas Medical Marijuana Commission. We're talking about a conservative Arkansas here. And this is in the background there. Let's see if we can see if we can. I don't know if it's going to let me forward it. I don't think it will. It's not going to let me do it. It's 30 minutes long, this business. As some of it might be, uh, you know, it looks like raw video, unedited video. Um, it, the player is have to do a here lot we go. of work uh, to here we go. get ready for the process. Uh, the DFNA staff will be assisting them uh, in the uh, initial stages of their work. And so with that, I wanted to announce my appointment uh, to the commission as uh, Dr. Rhonda Henry Tillman, who is a surgical on a oncologist specializing in breast oncology at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. See the employment here? She is the professor of surgery at UAMS, uh, and she's co-director of the Cancer Control and Population Sciences for the Winthrop Rockefeller Cancer Institute. Uh, she is a board certified by the American Board of Surgery. Uh, Dr. Tillman, uh, I've spoken to, uh, meets the qualifications under the amendment and based upon my uh, personal uh, interview with her and uh, confidence in her, I know that she will uh, do a, ver a job full of integrity as uh, she proceeds to uh, serve on this commission. And now I'm pleased to recognize uh, President of the Senate, Jonathan Dismang, for his uh, announcements and comments. Thank you, Governor. Um, just real quick, just a little bit of background, and it's really about the task that these commissioners have, and that's to oversee the cultivation and dispensing of medical marijuana here in the state. And in addition to that is to uh, oversee and ensure the proper prescribing between the physician and the payment. Uh, my first appointment to the commission is James Miller. I think most of you in the room know that James is a former chief of staff for the Senate. Uh, and he has a extensive knowledge in the rules, regulations, promulgation rules.
I just had to stop it there for a minute because I noticed the Sloydian frip. Do you know what a Sloydian frip is? It's a Freudian slip. That's what it is. I just did this. The Sloydian frip is a Freudian slip. Uh, when, you, when you started to say something or you said it in a way that uh, you, you let it slip what you were thinking, when you were really trying to say something else, you let slip something that was hiding in, in your head that you didn't want to say, but it slipped out anyways. And he said that the commission was created. I just noticed it while it was playing. The commission was created to make to ensure part of the part of the job of the commission was to make sure uh, that the uh, prescription was proper between the doctor and the payment. (laughs) The doctor and the payment. You see what's going on here? This is all about the money, folks. He wanted to say the doctor and the patient. But instead, he said the doctor and the payment. He, he said what he meant. I'll just let it play on. And, and, and the ability to carry those out. Felt as though it was very important to have someone with that type of background, with both the executive branch and the legislative branch, and again, being able to follow through from beginning to end that rulemaking pro- process. Uh, second appointment is Dr. Carlos Roman of Little Rock. Uh, He is a pain doctor uh, here in Little Rock, but also very well known uh, because of his commitment to ensuring uh, the protection of both the patients and the doctors in the prescribing of narcotics. And the payment. Uh, I think that his background is one that is uh, is needed on the commission, again, because of their task of overseeing that relationship between doctors and patients. And the payment. And also because of his experience uh, with with pain medicine and uh, and the fact that this is medical marijuana. Uh, So you get the idea. They're, they're, they're on here uh, appointing people to a commission, a board, to oversee the rules and regulations of the new medical marijuana thing that these citizens, these crazy citizens, got passed here in Arkansas. <laughs> Eehaw! We got medical weed here in Arkansas. You hear that, Mr. Camel? You hear that, Mr. Sheep? We got camels in Arkansas? I'm not sure. I'm sure they do, but they're probably cigarettes. Uh, you know, don't forget that uh, the southern states do, do grow tobacco. They, they grow in tobacco. They got plantations of tobacco from all those big, ba- big box, uh, you know, cigar and cigarette retailers. It's all about the money. It's always been about the money. And I'm saying if you want to be about the money now, go seek out a cannabis job. If you... If you are looking right now because you got laid off, you got disenfranchised from whatever fast food job you're out there trying to work two of to make ends meet. Go implore if you don't have retail cannabis or medical marijuana available in your state. Go employ, implore rather. Yes, you as a Sloydian trip. Go employ them. Go implore your state representative, your state senator your state congressman, your legislator, go talk to the one that represents you and tell them how important cannabis is to economy. We did it here in Michigan. We pointed out to people all across, all the naysayers, all the guys that were still on the bandwagon of prohibition, pointed out to them very clearly through the $2 bill effort I'll tell you about this really quickly as we go out. Uh, How much money was being created by the current cannabis industry? Just here right now. So we had all the people that were patients and caregivers run around and exchange their currency for $2 bills. And then go proceed to spend all of them in their local marketplace. Because what happens when you do that is people are fascinated by that $2 bill. And when they see you come in and pay for your $69 grocery bill in twos, it sparks a conversation. Wow, a lot of $2 bills today. Where'd you get all these twos? I don't even know if I got a place in my cash register to put them. They don't. There's no place to put the twos in the cash register. Because people never give them twos. So now they got to take time out, talk to their boss. What do I do with the twos? I got 27 twos from this guy. Well, I'll put them under the, put, put, lift up the tray and put them under there with the hundreds. We'll count them up later. 
Don't keep them in the regular tray. Don't pass them back out. Well, sometimes they do. They make, sometimes they'll put them in with the ones. Pass them out as change. And they'll be like, where did the twos come from? Well, this guy that came in and said that, you know, it's, it's the local pot guys, the local cannabis community. Those are the guys that came in with the twos. And so when you spend it, somebody else receives it, and they see that where it came from. And they see the news story attached. Hey, all the guys in the cannabis community are spending their $2 bills, and then they see the twos coming into their cash registers. And they understand what an important part the cannabis economy plays in their local economy. All politics are local. It's all about the money. The money's changed. The industry's changed. People's views have changed. We've done our jobs. Now it's time to rake in the cash. We'll see you tomorrow on The Full Melt Show. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.